Angkor Wat in Cambodia is one of the largest temple complexes in the world. 800 years ago, this was the center of the Khmer Empire. Today, it's a world heritage site and an impressive testament to a lost dynasty. And it's just one example of the work of the German Foreign Ministry's cultural preservation program. Two geologists from Cologne have made it their life's work to preserve the monument for future generations. The temples, in particular the Apsaras, or celestial nymphs, have been damaged by changing climatic conditions and bat feces. It's all completely hollow here. Not the stomach, that's solid. But up here, the chest is hollow too. Yes, this is the major issue we're faced with, destruction that you often can't see from the outside at all. An exterior surface that's still intact, but inside the reliefs, two to five centimeters below the surface, it's completely soft and has come away entirely, leaving nothing but a crumbling surface like this. We call it exfoliation. Specially developed substances aim to at least slow down the process of decay. The German specialists are also passing on their know-how to Cambodian colleagues, an endeavor that's receiving a great deal of support from the Foreign Office. The Ministry has already provided more than two and a half million euros for the Angkor Wat Temple Complex project, one of the largest in the preservation program. Afghanistan, a country scarred by years of war that have left many of its cultural treasures in ruins. The Foreign Office is especially committed to providing aid here, financing more than 60 individual projects to date. One of those projects in Kabul shows to what extent such involvement can have a positive impact on people's lives. It's often hot and dusty here during the summer months. That's why many locals like to spend a few hours in the gardens of Babur. German and foreign archaeologists are working together to restore the site with the aid of the Foreign Office. The founder of the Mughal dynasty, Emperor Babur, commissioned the garden in the early 16th century. Much of the site became derelict during the Soviet occupation and under Taliban rule. The garden was in dire need of comprehensive restoration, a project that also created many jobs. New paths had to be laid, historic buildings renovated, and the canals repaired. Today, the garden is an oasis where people can find relaxation away from the hustle and bustle of daily life. Puzzling images of death, threatening scorpion-like birdmen, majestic deities, all 3,000 years old and a major tourist attraction at Berlin's Pergamon Museum, the salvaged gods of Tel Halaf. We have Max von Oppenheim to thank for bringing the Aramaic figures to world attention. In the early 20th century, the dedicated archaeologist excavated the sculptures at the site of a palace in the north of what is today Syria. Oppenheim shipped the artifacts to Berlin, but most of them were destroyed during World War II. There were almost 30,000 separate fragments, and it wasn't until 2001 that anyone dared to tackle the challenge of piecing them back together. A gigantic puzzle that took the restoration team nine years to complete. The identification process was a great success at first. Although we might not have found the fragments of a particular monument, which was something we might have hoped to do, we always managed to find things that could be categorized and identified. We were often so engrossed in what we were doing that we worked until 9 or 10 p.m. In the course of its work, the team also found parts of a figure that Oppenheim had left in Syria, the wife of the weather god. She's also been restored in Germany, with the help of the Foreign Office. 
For the past 30 years, we've been involved in cultural preservation projects in 142 nations, spending 50 million euros. If you count each individual project, the total is 2,350. It's an enormous number. And of course, we don't just do this to demonstrate our high regard for other cultures. It's also a matter of instituting an identity. The goddess is on loan from the Syrian National Museum, where it will return after the Berlin exhibition ends. It's a prerequisite for international understanding, a way of getting to know each other better, of acquainting ourselves with other cultures, and finding out about how people in other cultures see the world. That's also an important basis for German value-oriented foreign policy. A fascination for other cultures, something archaeology and foreign policy have in common. Germany fully intends to continue its work helping to preserve the world's cultural treasures.